Hey, this is Chelsea with Mitchell County Conservation and I wanted to take you guys through the monarch tagging process. We are in the height of monarch migration right now and so um, I have a monarch here with us today to show you the monarch tagging process and why it's important. So uh, I have my tags this year and the data sheet. So what we're gonna do is um, we have to write down our tagging data and our tag number. So this is basically like a license plate for the butterfly. Many butterflies fly down without any tags on them, but we don't get any information. So there's a lot of mysteries with monarchs that we're trying to solve. And so how they know where to go, um, the routes they take are all part of those questions. And so having tagged monarchs allow us to get some information from those butterflies and it uses an alphanumerical process so it's got a series of four letters and three numbers that will identify an individual butterfly and they are just these round little stickers that are specially designed to not hurt the butterfly but to stick on throughout their um, so over a thousand mile journey down to their overwintering site in Mexico. So our butterfly that we're going to tag today is a e j w nine two five and it is september 10th 2021 and this is a wild butterfly that i caught so it was an adult wild flying butterfly versus a butterfly that i maybe have raised inside the nature center so i'm going to put a w here we are in osage iowa So now the only question that we have to answer with our butterfly is, is it a male or a female? And then we will put the tags on the butterfly. There's a spot on the outside of the wing that sort of looks like a mitten. So that'd be the thumb and the mitten. And that is where we're gonna place the tag. It doesn't matter which side, but the tag is gonna go onto that, that special mitten shaped cell. And that's how they're gonna travel down to Mexico. It doesn't send them off balance or anything like that. So I have my butterfly here, and we'll take a look for that cell. So here is the mitten-shaped cell on this butterfly, and I'm going to go ahead and put the tag on it right now. So you have to try not to touch the tag uh, very much so it doesn't lose any of its adhesiveness, and gently place the tag on the wing. I like to give them just a little gentle squeeze to make sure it's all the way stuck. And there is our tagged butterfly. We still have to answer that question, is it a male or a female? And the easiest way to look for that is when we open up the wings, we're gonna look on this back set of wings. And females have thick lines and there's no two swollen spots on their hind wings. Males, on the other hand, have thin veins or thin lines and these two swollen kind of glandular areas on the back wing. So this butterfly that we tagged today is a female. So I'm gonna write that in our data sheet. And this data gets turned into the University of Kansas and that does all of the monarch research. If somebody is to find this butterfly along its migration route, they can call it in or make note that they have found this butterfly. There's a website here and um, they can make note. And if somebody finds it in Mexico, this data will get submitted and they can look up exactly how far it traveled and approximate the route that it took to get there. So if you find any butterflies in a migration cluster, especially in the evenings and trees, let us know and we'll bring some tags out and you guys can tag your own butterflies. So we'll let this one go.